everybody's got a guy for something, right? Everybody's got a plumber, an electrician, somebody who does construction work. They've got a computer guy. Everybody's got a guy for something. So you want to be their guy. You want to be the chiropractor that they recommend to everybody. So that's who you want to be. You want to be their guy. You do that by developing relationships over time with your patients. Hi, everybody. Happy Thursday. Welcome in to those who are new here. Uh, my name is Angelina. I'm a senior advisor here at Proactive. Um, I'm hosting today's masterclass alongside with Dr. Layton. Dr. Layton, how's your morning going? Outstanding. How about yours? Amazing. Thank you. So um, this week's masterclass is going to be a little shorter and sweet. Uh, we're going to be talking about tips on patient retention. So how to keep your patients um, coming in, keeping that consistent flow so that we can balance out, have a really nice balance of new patients coming in and also reoccurring patient visits. So without further ado, go ahead, Dr. Lee, take it away. Well, that's kind of the goal, right? You know, the, the age-old quest of chiropractors is to get new patients in the door. Then once you get them, you got to figure out how to keep them. So main steps for patient retention. The patient experience, the wait time, keeping in touch with your patients, software, and clear communication. So the patient experience, that's what everybody craves. They, you know, they wanna have a good experience when they come into your office. So creating a comfortable environment for you, your staff, your patients. Uh, so things that go into that, picking uh, colors for your office, right from the get-go, you know, when you're first putting your office together. Um, so avoiding colors like red. Red tends to make people angry. So you don't want an office just you know plastered with red everywhere. Um, you're gonna have people who are already, you know, in pain, they're agitated and red's gonna add. So, you know, soothing colors tend to work better. So, you know, uh, warm colors, uh, you know, uh, the, the blues, the greens are nice. Uh, and then neutrals like the blues, uh, browns. Anyway, uh, appealing artwork. So you don't want like, uh, you don't want it to look like you pick something up out of a garage sale or off the curb. You want some nice looking artwork in your office. So like we have a patient actually that's an artist. We have um, his artwork hanging up in the office, some different uh, photography, this photography in the city of Chicago. Um, a patient made a sign for the office that has my logo built into it. We have that hanging up. So it's kind of like the barn, um, barnwood type sign. Um, but having stuff that's, that's nice to look at, that, you know, it's appealing to the eye. Uh, comfortable seating. So, you know, you don't want seats that are, feel like what you, you sat in when you were in high school. Those are awful. Want people to feel comfortable, they're already, you know, they're they're in pain, they're uncomfortable walking to the door. You want to try to make them comfortable when they're, you know, either waiting for you or filling out paperwork. Um, staff dealing with patients. Make sure you have somebody that's a good people person that's the one that's interacting with your patients. That person, you could have everything else right, and that person could fill it all right from you. Um, so you know, make sure you're you're diligent about picking your staff. Get to know your patients and listen to them. I've been doing this for over 20 years. There's patients I've been seeing since I started in practice. Um, you start to become part of these people's families. And so you should be able to ask about their mom, their dad, their kids, their, their brother, their sister. You, you get to know them really well. One, that's how you get referrals. They're going to they're gonna send all their family members to you. And you're going to get to know them. Um, but it shows that you're paying attention. So like yesterday, I was sitting at the desk and, and a patient called, uh, actually his wife, and uh, I hadn't seen this guy in over eight years. And, uh, you know, she's telling me his name. And, and I said, you know, uh, I remembered him. She's like, really? And I'm like, well, does he still work for the city of? And she's like, well, no, he actually retired. I'm like, okay, great for him. And, you know, I asked a couple other questions. She was shocked that I remember. And you do that all the time with patients. You've got it on the table. And um, because you've been paying attention, you know, you can ask them about um, something from the past or whatever. But then they know you're, you're connected and in tune with so they appreciate that. So, you know, helping patients feeling more relaxed, they're, they're more open to you and, and less anxious. Um, and then strive to create an experience that exceeds the patient's expectations. That should always be something that we're striving for day in, day out. The wait time. So be courteous. Uh, be courteous of your, your patients and their time, the ones that are on the schedule, the ones that are coming in. Um, your time, their time, it's all valuable. So stick to your schedule. You know, don't don't sit at the table and talk for twenty to thirty minutes with a patient when you've got another one waiting. You need to like get on down the road and and you know, have that person that you're talking to. They can come back another time, or if you want to talk to them outside of work. But 
you know, if you've got a patient waiting, you can't sit there for 20 minutes talking to them. Um, so ideally a patient's waiting less than five minutes. That's gonna help make their patient experience uh, better. Um, and if the better you make their experience, the more likely they are to come back. So look at your schedule, be respectful of your patient's time, contact them if you see there's gonna be a long wait somewhere. So maybe you know you have a new patient that you know has a hot low back that you're trying to squeeze in. Um, you know, if you're going to be running 10, 20 minutes behind, let your patients know, give them a heads up. You can get caught up. Um, they'll appreciate if you give them the heads up as opposed to them just showing up and you're letting them sit there and uh, get cold sitting there. Um, also, those patients that know you stay on time or that you you appreciate their time and uh, give them a message, give them a heads up. Those people are more likely to keep their, their actual appointments and show up on time. Get in touch. Everybody's got a guy for something, right? Everybody's got a plumber, an electrician, somebody who does construction work. They've got a computer guy. Everybody's got a guy for something. So you want to be their guy. You want to be the chiropractor that they recommend to everybody. Um, you know, so you're standing there, you know, uh, you're getting ready to adjust a patient and they're like, oh, I, you know, I'm referring Bob in from work. Uh, he was complaining of some low back pain. And I, I said, I got a guy. So that's who you want to be. You want to be their guy. You do that by developing relationships over time with your patients. So, you know, send a uh, birthday card via mail, uh, mail, email, and or text. Um, we use Zingit, so actually the birthday texts go out automated. Uh, and we also do uh, the postcards for people's birthdays. Um, blog or electronic newsletter regularly, and we'll get into that more, but you should be sending that once a week. Um, social media posts, so relevant articles, information of interest, pictures, videos, testimonials are good. But things that things that matter, things that are, are pertinent to chiropractic, that's what you want to be posting. That's what people need to see because you want to keep yourself relevant in their world. Uh, and you may put something across the board that they see that all of a sudden they're like, oh, you know, maybe it, it relates to them. But if it doesn't relate to them, maybe it relates to somebody else they know and they forward that message on. Now, all of a sudden, uh, they put you in a circle that you weren't in before. So you get introduced to somebody without even knowing. Um, postcards, I love doing postcards. Uh, we do those uh, fairly regularly just for different, uh, different events that are going on. So whether you move in your office, you know, you're adding a new service, a new staff member, uh, you can do it as a marketing promotion to let people know what's going on to get them back on the door. But again, it keeps you um, front of mind uh, with people. Uh, the email and text campaigns. So again, we use Zingit. You can send out um, bulk test, text messages uh, every now and then. They don't allow you to do it like daily or weekly, but you can do those text campaigns to uh, uh, be relevant to people. And then create a uh, connection and they're likely to return. So uh, if, if you can't connect with your patients, you're kind of an introvert and you're not good at getting inside people's wheelhouse. If you can't, if you can't get in their, their circle, um, it's going to be hard to get people to, to come back in the door to see you. you you've got to figure out a way to make a connection with those people. So software. As much as you can, create automation. So it's not that you or your staff is having to do all that. You can save time. So just because you're doing all this doesn't mean... You know, you have to spend 20, 30 hours a week, you know, devoted to keeping in touch with your patients. A lot of it can be automated, save you time, and it's probably faster, more effective. And um, it's going to be pertinent stuff that, that you don't have to come up with off the cuff. Um, so, again, we use tech messages. So, proactive is sending out text messages to all our patients that are in our dashboard. Um, Zingit is, uh, works with ChiroTouch. Um, so, we use ChiroTouch. You can also do messages through ChiroTouch for Zingit. Uh, interfaces with ChiroTouch, and so our patients get reminder texts from Zingit as well. Um, same, we get the um, birthday text messages that go through Zingit. Um, you can email patients, so Outlook, uh, Proactive, Constant Contact, SendX, Data Axle USA, there's other ones out there, but those are email programs to keep in touch with your patients. Uh, whether you want to email them on the daily or if you want to do weekly, um, but at least do weekly. And that's where the newsletter system comes in. You should be sending them some pertinent information, whether it's an article, whatever it is, on a weekly basis. Uh, so it want, you want something that's about the audience um, with a call to action. So when we say about the audience, um, if most of your patients are, say, into fitness and exercise, um, it doesn't really make sense to send an article that talks about geriatric care. Um, so send something that's pertinent to your, your patient database. So if, if you have a patient database that's active people, then send stuff related to exercise or 
injuries related to exercise or stretches related to exercise. And then at the end of that, you want to put a call to action. So maybe you're creating YouTube videos and you want to create a, a link that gets them to go to check out your YouTube video on whatever the exercise was or the stretch was, whatever it was. Um, you can do that. Maybe you want them to call the office because you want them to get scheduled. Put the phone number in um, in that newsletter system where they can just click on that if they're using mobile and they can uh, automatically call the office. Um, I put in there, <laughs> and this should be a no-brainer, but if you're deciding to do something like Outlook, make sure you do a blind carbon copy when you send uh, um, a mass uh, email out to your patient database. Uh, I know somebody... I was good friends with and they decided to send out a mass email to their entire uh, database and they didn't do it as a blind carbon copy so everybody's names everybody's emails were in there that's a huge no no it's um, that's you know a violation of HIPAA because everybody gets to see everybody else's data um, patients actually called him out on it he was really worried he was, he was scared that uh, he was going to get you know the, the fine for violating HIPAA um, you know he he did some good repair work with those people, reaching out to him and uh, calling them and, and talking to them and apologized and, and things kind of simmered down. But um, you have to pay attention to what you're doing. And that's why it's nice to have people that do this stuff regularly. Let them do it for you. Sometimes it's worth paying somebody else to do the work. Um, HairTouch, again, for the software, they allow a patient to do check-ins so, you know, via an iPad or tablet. Um, and they can start to enter the subjective data into the SOAP notes. So, again, that's stuff that saves you time. Um, I just, I have Cairo Touch. I use it for billing. We use it for scheduling, but I will not use it for the EHR. So again, finding an EHR system you like, it, uh, Cairo Touch to me is too clunky and slow for the EHR. Uh, so I actually, I use the got documentation uh, bulletproof, but these are some other ones that are out there that are, are fairly popular among chiropractors. Air communication. So this goes all the way back to, you know, your day one, day two. So you want to you want to communicate well with your patients at the very beginning of you know them coming in the office. Um, explain your treatment plan when they come back on their day two or day one. Whenever you do your R, uh, ROF, when you're going over X-rays or exam findings. Maybe you don't do X-rays, um, but make sure you're explaining what your treatment plan looks like. So explain the complaint, if you can treat it, how long it's going to take, and what it's going to cost. That's what patients care about. That's really all they care about. Can you can you get them better? What's it gonna What's it gonna cost, and how long is it gonna take? They want to know what kind of commitment they have, time-wise and financially. Um, as the patients come in, though, you can't just expect them to always, you know, know that okay, I'm supposed to be here three times a week. Um, remind them they're supposed to be here. You know, they're in there on Monday. Okay, you've got two more patient, uh, two more visits set up this week, right, Bob? And he's like, Oh yeah, I got them set up. I'll see you Wednesday, Friday. Awesome. See you then. Uh, Oh no, I didn't know what my treatment plan was. Well, make sure you're you're going and scheduling with Christina, but you've got two more visits this week. You should be on three times a week. We're on week number two. You've got two more weeks now. So you want to keep working and uh, getting that ingrained in their brain so they know you want you want to become automatic in your daily life. And then the easiest way to uh, get around that scheduling patients when they check in when they first come in the office. Um, that way, when they're done, they're done. The payment's already done. They're already scheduled, and when you're done with them, they can go out the door. If you're checking with them, oh, yeah, you're already scheduled this week for two more visits. She's like, yep, already done. All right, see you. I'll see you Wednesday. So everything worthwhile is uphill. So it's not that you can just see new patients and forget about it. Once they're in your system, you need to continue to cultivate those relationships. Uh, you can need to continue to work on your business. You worked hard to get those people. Now you need to work hard to take care of them and keep them. Um, there's no reason you can't keep patients for lifetime. Uh, again, 22 years in practice. I have patients that I've had since, you know, the beginning of the 22 years. Um, there's people that, you know, you may not see for a while. They may not see you for a few years. Um, doesn't mean they won't come back. I will tell you when I first started with Proactive and um, started my campaign, that's where I tell a lot of the docs that I talk to through Proactive. Um, but for the first few weeks, what I saw a lot of were a lot of reactivates, patients that had kind of maybe drifted away for a little while, and they were coming through that same dashboard because they they hadn't seen me. And they start clicking on the information, they're interested, and next thing you know, those are people are people are coming in too. So my numbers were not just all new patients. I was getting added with um, some reactivates, some of them that were over three years. So then you can consider them a new patient. Um, but again, everything to increase your numbers. But it's nice to have the, re the reactivates. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Layton. I do. Um, I feel like this presentation was very thoroughly explained, but I was curious 
Um, can you kind of go into depth about how you can build and maintain a closer and intimate relationship with your patients? Listening to them from the beginning. If you if you actually sit and and um, you keep your patients front of mind when you're you know when you come to work, you should be focused. You should be focused on your patients, uh, focused on what's going on in your day. Um, you shouldn't have all the uh, tangential stuff that's interfering. So right. if you pay attention, attention to your patients and you start to like listen to what they actually say, what's going on with their, you know, whatever their problem is with their back pain, neck pain, whatever it is. So you're, you're looking to see that improve and they get better. That makes it a lot easier. If you're not getting them better, you're not going to have much of a relationship with the patient. Mm -hmm. um, so as their health improves, but also because you're, you're asking questions, they're telling you about their life because very often, I mean, when some, you see somebody three times a week and you do that for a month, you're seeing them way more than their medical doctor. And so you develop a different relationship with them. You develop, you know, and, and if you see them for years, you get to know them and they introduce your family members. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I also think it's important to create an environment where they also feel safe um, and they also feel where they can be open because I've, I've noticed that the, I guess the more loyal customers are the ones that feel comfortable in their environment. Mm -hmm. And they also have like a certain kind of like intimate relationship where they can, some can say where they can like release release some steam or be heard when, especially if you're dealing with a patient who typically doesn't have anyone that can, um, you know, listen to them and mm -hmm. and you know create conversation. But yeah, thank you so much for the presentation. I that was pretty much the questions that I have. Um, for those who came and watched today's masterclass, thank you so much for joining. And everybody can hopefully everybody can have an amazing day. Thank you so much.